picture it. A desolate world, highways packed with cars, deserted, all leaving a city. A shotgun is your new best friend. Yes, it's happened. The zombie apocalypse. <laughs> the dead have taken over the world while the rest of us fight for another day. It's amazing to think that this all started because of a microscopic particle, but it did. A virus is to blame for it all. Okay, so maybe the zombie apocalypse isn't the most realistic thing, but it's true that a virus could cause a worldwide epidemic. And today, I am going to tell you about viruses. More specifically, the Mimi virus, which is a giant new virus just recently identified. Today, allow me to enlighten you about this new virus and compare it to regular old viruses. Secondly, I will tell you how it was discovered and why it took scientists so long to find it. And finally, I will inform you of the implications this giant could have on virology and even the structure of life as we know it. Before I tell you about the Mimi virus, I am going to go over some basic facts about a typical virus. The most important fact to understand is that viruses are not considered to be living. According to Foundations in Biology by Kathleen Tolero, they are what scientists call obligate intracellular parasites, meaning that they cannot multiply unless they invade a specific host cell and take over its genetic and metabolic functions so that they can make and release thousands of new viruses. Secondly, normal viruses are incredibly small. In fact, they are the smallest infectious agents known to man. An article published by the American Association for the Advancement of Science in 1932 used the term ultramicroscopic to describe their size, which ranges from 20 nanometers to 400 nanometers in diameter. Just for reference, there are 10 million nanometers in one centimeter. Scientists already know that giant viruses exist. Giantvirus.org, last accessed on November 1st, 2011, calls them nucleocytoplasmic large DNA viruses, henceforth known as NCLDVs. In order to be considered an NCLDV, the virus must have at least 300 kilobase pairs, which Foundations in Microbiology defines as a set of two nucleotides, which are the basic components of DNA. The diameter of an NCLDV must be greater than 200 nanometers. The Mimi virus is a giant among giants. Regular viruses, new virus. According to the American Scientist Journal from July 2011, the Mimi virus is 750 nanometers in diameter and has 1.2 million kilobase pairs. Now that I've discussed the size of the Mimi virus in comparison to typical viruses, I will tell you how it was discovered and why it took scientists so long to identify it. It was actually first discovered in England in 1992 by a microbiologist named Timothy Robotham in a water tank, but it was mistaken for a bacteria. Eleven years later, in 2003, virologists realized the Mimi virus was a virus, not a bacteria. An article in the March 2006 issue of Discover Magazine tells how virologist Bernard Lascola found the giant under an electron microscope. How could it have been mistaken, you might ask? Firstly, because it was visible under the microscope. If you recall from earlier in my speech, viruses are classified as ultramicroscopic. Just microscopic means it cannot be seen with the naked eye. So ultramicroscopic, good luck. Secondly, it was not filtered out by filtration, which is a classic tool used to isolate viruses. According to an article on PubMed.gov in 2005, a virus filter has pores that are 200 nanometers, more than enough for a normal virus, but not any virus. This also explains where it got its name. Mimi virus is short for mimicking virus because it seemed like a bacteria for so long. Now that I've explained how it was discovered and shown why it was elusive to microbiologists, I will inform you of the implications this new virus could have. Mimi virus challenges many established ideas in science. According to ScienceDaily.com 2011, it could perhaps redefine what a virus is since the Mimi virus seems to straddle the ground between living and non-living. It could be the missing link between viruses and living cells. It might also change the picture of life, from ancient organisms to the diversity found today. Even though it took so long to be identified, the Mimi virus has been around a long time. This is shown because it is made up of genes from several different sources, including bacteria and eukaryotes. It branched from the typical virus thousands of years ago. Due to the fact that this ancient line doesn't fit well into any of the three domains of life, which are bacteria, archaea, and eukarya, 
Many scientists are proposing that NCLDVs become a fourth domain of life. There are also environmental issues. According to the American Scientist Journal, giant viruses infect almost 20% of the phytoplankton population. Phytoplankton carry out more than 50% of the photosynthesis that takes place on Earth. If bees become infected and cannot carry out this task, it could be disastrous. There's also the worry that these viruses could be human pathogens. They are being tr treated provisionally as a biosafety level two, which includes any infectious organism that can be transmitted by the air. Another cause of concern is that the antibodies to these viruses have been found in pneumonia patients. In conclusion, we have gone over the basic facts of normal viruses and compared them to giant viruses. We've talked about how the most recent member of the NCLDBs was discovered, and we've talked about the implications this discovery could have on the future. Hopefully that future doesn't involve zombies. <laughs> <laughs>